Hey guys, it's Calvin, also known as Romer, and this is going to be a special video where I look at the first expansion pass for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and all its details. Um, really, this DLC, when it was first announced, was met by mixed reviews. There was a lot of people who really hated the idea of a DLC for Zelda, and there was people who really liked the idea for a DLC for Zelda. Uh, my stance on it is that I think that Nintendo needs to do more things like this, because they kind of just, in the past, have released games and just left them there for, you know, for years just for people to play but in this way I feel like a game like Breath of the Wild that was already gonna last for years is gonna last for even longer and there's a reason why games like Sky Skyrim have lasted so long that's because of the expansions and yes because of mods too but the expansions did play a part in that originally so let's get into actually the details of this DLC and I'm gonna probably give my opinion on it as well and of course you guys can give your opinion on it also uh, in the comment section if you want to. Look look how YouTube that sounded. You can you can leave your um, opinions in the comment section and smash that like button, guys. Don't You don't have to actually do that. <laughs> so it actually opens up with a message about the Expansion Pass DLC. It says, Expansion Pass DLC Pack 1 Detailed. Uh, whether you've completed The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild or you were playing it for the first time, the Expansion Pass adds a fresh content to your adventure. The DLC pack of the Expansion Pass will be available this summer, and here's a peek of what's included. Really cool. So there's a really cool picture of, of Link uh, standing in front of what appears to be a giant kind of wooded area with a tower. Uh, it says the Trial of the Sword. When you get to a certain sacred location, uh, you can take on the new Trial of the Sword challenge. Face an onslaught of enemies one wave after another. Link starts the challenge without any equipment or weapons. When all the enemies in a room are defeated, Link proceeds to the next. Uh, proceeds to the next. Uh, clear all the trials. It will take about 45 rooms in total and the power of the Master Sword will be awakened, and will always be in its glowing, powered-up state, while usable. So first of all, we get a new trial, and it kind of reminds me of the Trial of Shadows that you would get if you had Wolf Link, uh, but in this case you don't actually need an amiibo to get this. Uh, I like the idea of this, I, I really like the, the Cave of Trials from the first one, I actually only recently actually played them in Twilight Princess, the Cave of Trials, or whatever, the, whatever it's called, the Cave of Shadows, I, I forget the name of it. Uh, but I really like that expansion, or not that expansion, but that- well, I guess it is an expansion to the game. I think this is a really good thing. I think this is going to be a fun challenge to go through. A lot of people would, might want to do it in different ways. A lot of people might want to do it just uh, a tree ranch only or something like that. I, I really like this. I think this, first of all, first of all, I think this alone could be sold as a separate DLC, and that's that's one of the things I, I, I think is going to be a common theme throughout the two DLCs that we get. For Zelda is that they both could be sold as separate DLCs for quite a hefty price in my view, not a hefty hefty price. Like I'd pay, I'd pay 7 bucks for this DLC. Maybe 5, I don't know. So next up we have Hero Path Mode. Uh, this is this new map feature shows the path Link has walked through Hyrule from the last 200 hours of gameplay. Uh, use the time tracker bar to see where you spent the most time and where you have yet to explore. There's bound to be more adventures and maybe a shrine or two on the road less traveled. Uh, so what this is right here uh, is uh, what I'm guessing is basically the ability to show you where you've been in the game. This is something that people have wanted. I've wanted this. I think a lot of people have wanted this. And I feel like they're listening. Uh, it, it's, it would be really cool to see also what other players would, where would go. Like if you could actually just click onto someone's profile and see where they went on the game. I think it would be really cool to see. But the idea that you get to see where you went is, is extremely cool to me. I think this is an extremely cool thing. Um, so yeah, I think that's probably one of the main things for me is because I'm looking for all the shrines right now and the idea that I can look at the map and see exactly where I haven't been uh, is more useful than where I have been, I think. I think that's going to be a very useful feature. Uh, after that we have the hard mode, which I think a lot of people are actually talking about. Uh, in hard mode, enemies gradually get regain health, so take them out as quickly as possible. All enemies are also powered up by one level. For example, red bokoblins are in normal mode and now blue bokoblins. Enemies can also have higher maximum levels than they would, no would have in normal mode. Look up and you may also find some enemies and treasure chests in the sky. Uh, so I was told about this one, the uh, hard mode, the hard mode difficulty. This is actually, um, this is something that I think was needed in the game for the start, but I'm glad that we're actually getting it. Um, so I'm looking at the picture and it actually shows like a moblin in the sky. I, I like it. <laughs> I don't know what if, I don't know. I like it so much. The idea of like, these people in the sky. The only way you can get to these creatures and the chests is by traveling up high. Or maybe Rivali's Gate will actually help out a lot with that if you actually had it. Um, I'm thinking of doing a hard mode playthrough of this game at some point. Just the main quests, I'd say, not any shrines or anything like that. I think that'd be really fun to do. 
I think this is going to be really good. I think a lot of people are going to like this. I think a lot of people are going to play through this also. I think I think this is a really good move for Nintendo to add a hard mode to the game because... I don't know if, I don't know if you think... Do you guys think the hard mode is lacking? Or something Because I heard a few people say that. Um, I think the enemies gradually regaining, regaining health is is going to be difficult as fuck. Because I sometimes I run away for 10 weeks before I go back and fight an enemy. Um, all enemies are also powered up by one level. That's another thing that might actually be a bit of a, a bit of a problem for me because I already have problems with the with the with the the, the blue ones, not the blue ones anymore, but the the white ones. So what what do the white ones become? Super white ones? Well, anyway, like the, also the chest in the sky makes it sound like there's gonna be something really cool there. Travel medallion. Somewhere in the world, there is a chest with a travel medallion inside. When you use this, you can register your current location as a fast travel point on the map. You can only register one location using the travel medallion. Now, does this mean one uh, location to the entire game? Or multiple, but you can only have it in one place at a time? That's what I want to know. Because if not, I think Hyrule Castle would be a perfect place for this, because it's really hard to travel into Hyrule Castle and travel back out. I think that would be a really good thing to have. Um, yeah, this is this is just all some cool side stuff that's adding on, and it's 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 really... It's really just them saying if you had any inconveniences inconveniences with fast traveling to certain points, you can just put down a place where you found what you want to come back to later and use it. So yeah, what we actually have here next is actually the Majora's Mask outfit, the Twilight Pri oh my god, the Minda Mask, I have to get that. Uh, there's also the Phantom Armor, there's Tingle's Hood, and oh my god, there's a Tingle outfit. That is really good. So there's a Tingle's outfit, there's one from Phantom Hourglass, I believe, that, that's probably what it's from, right? The Phantom Hourglass games? But really, the thing I'm really interested in is the Twilight Princess helmet. I want that Twilight Princess helmet a lot. Um, Twilight Princess is actually my favorite Zelda game, I think. Um, still, it might be it might be Breath of the Wild after, I, after I'm finished with it, but I'm, I just feel like I'm not finished with the game yet, so I can't really give it a perfect uh, reading on it just yet. But yeah, man, where do you get these? Okay, let's read it actually. More armor. There are eight treasure chests placed around Hyrule containing armor uh, themed after previous Legend of Zelda titles. Watch for tips as to the whereabouts of these chests as you travel around Hyrule. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely gonna be looking for all of those for sure. And then there's a Korok mask, and the Korok mask, the Korok mask is also hidden in the treasure chest somewhere in the world. While wearing this, uh, it shakes whenever Link is near a hidden Korok location. There are 900 Koroks hiding in Hyrule, so this should help you discover quite a few of them. Um, okay. So that's the, D the DLC items for the DLC pack 1. Uh, the whole pack, of course, 1 and 2 is going to be 20 bucks. I think other companies would sell this, just that, for 20 bucks. And I think I, I honestly think that the DLC the aspect of the game is the right way to go, because it needs we need to continue to... Nintendo needs to continue to support its games. Like, past the main game. Like, that's just my view, anyway. I think they need to c keep continuing to support uh, their games. And I know they have been doing it a lot better. With Mario Kart, they did it really well. And uh, with Splatoon, they did it extremely well as well. So I think they're getting it. I think they're getting it that they need to, like, you know, support the game. Um, what, I th what I think of the actual DC, do I think that it's worth... Let's say this is 10 bucks uh, of the 20 bucks. I think that's well worth it. I think that's extremely worth it. I know a lot of people are going to be really unhappy that you have to buy a hard mode. And that, that is kind of silly in a way. But this hard mode seems like it's much more than just a hard mode. It seems like it's an extra, like, they're adding enemies in the sky. Like, <laughs> I don't know how that adds to difficulty, but I'm assuming Nintendo knows more than me. I I like this first pack. I think this summer is actually going to be really cool, especially with the trials. The 45 room trials is going to be really awesome. I want that, that min helmet I would pay 500 euro for right now. <laughs> I'm just saying right now, if you want to drop it in my game, I'll, I'll just... I hope you can actually use the, the the hat thing. I assume you can't, but I think that'd be really cool. All right, guys. Um, what do you think of this DLC? Personally, I actually really like it. I really like it. Um, I'm going to definitely play it and probably play it the the, the day it comes out. Um, I'm excited because I thought the Breath of the Wild, my playthrough Breath of the Wild, was going to be finished, but I really think there's a lot more I want to find in the game, which means I'm going to continue on playing it for a while longer. Um, Zelda has become a cornerstone of my channel that I'm very happy about. And, um, yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, I, if you want more of these type of videos, I, I probably will do them, and to be honest, even if people don't want more of these, I find this to be very fun. Uh, to, uh, we'll talk about the next expansion of the DLC uh, when we get some news on that as well. I'll see you guys later.